Well, here we are, January 14th, 2021. I got 11,000 taps in. So that everything I have that comes to my sugar house. Just doing a preliminary leak check, trying to get what I call the big ones. Um, I do have sensors, as you all know. And sensors work very well. They do, they do. But trying to locate these big leakers and stuff, you know, I can't be looking at the sensor and listening and all that stuff. So there's no sap to worry about kicking back or anything like that. So just do the valve check way. Just turn this system on. Um, 1700 taps. The pump station. Um, wet, dry. Lines go every which way up a brook, and by a road, and under a road, and over a road. Bunch of stuff, so. <sighs> Let's see what we get here. There's gonna be one here that's gonna have some leaks on it, I think. Had um, a lot of air on this wet and dry system. And once I let it build up and turn it off and, and checked it at the vacuum tank that we're using with this pump station, it was a pretty good air blast. So somewhere up here on the system, we got some leakage. Go up to malfunction junction here. Check this out. See what we got going on. Four lines coming in here. I can just turn them all off here. Oop, there's the one right there. You can hear it. Nothing on that one. Really, just that little puff is, that little puff is nothing. Pretty sure, if you listen now. Boom. That's the biggest leak. Like I said, we're not looking for micro leaks. We're not looking for sap, sap leakage. I'm trying to make 29 inches of vacuum right now. Just trying to get it tight. It's looking like, well, I say tight. I'm just trying to get to like 25 or 26 inches happily with my VFD, with my VFD being happy about it. Meaning that the pump's not running at full speed, 60 hertz, to try to curate that 25, 26 inches of vacuum. So, we gotta find the missed taps, or bear bites, we've been dealing with some bear bites this year, so. All right, close here. Oh, there it is. Whoop, there it is. Whoop, there it is. So, it never ceases to amaze me. All right, this tree, the video doesn't do it justice. I can't even put my arms halfway around that tree. It is a large tree. One would suspect it has two taps. And the guy tapping probably knew it had two taps, but he still forgot to come over here and tap this one that is wide open to the atmospheric air. Okay, so I have all my stuff. I'm gonna put this tap in, but uh, this right here is emptying the system. This is one tap off. I'm pretty sure it's the only one on the whole system here, doing a quick valve check. It's the only major leak on this whole entire system. This is emptying it down about four and a half inches right now. Pipes are dry, right? There's no sap. So, let me just plug that off for a sec. Makes a big difference. Now you think if you had one of those in your woods when the sap was running, Hanging like that, oh my goodness, is it gonna do all kinds of crazy things? The sap will be coming in and out of the releaser like crazy. You know, doing the big pulse deal that you see sometimes when there's large leaks. Um, so it's important to get your leaks fixed. 
And I know they're not 100% right this minute. But like I said, just trying to build some, some easy vacuum right now. Okay, so <laughs> about to embark on a little adventure here. Um, any of you guys that have sap lines, wet, dry lines, main lines, 5 16 lines, 3 16 lines, anything that goes over or around water, a brook, you know what I'm talking about. With the ice and the rocks and the danger and you're going to get wet. I don't really have my rubber boots on today, so I'm probably going to get my feet wet. But those of you that know, you know. You've been here. You've done that. So this main line, there's two main lines here hooked together actually. One branches off, goes under a road and up under uh, a power line and it gets 200 taps over there. The other one branches off, goes two different directions. Also under another road or same under the same road in a different location to get some more taps. It's a cluster, but either way, we're greedy, right? We want to get every tap. So. If you're thinking about doing this, building a line like this, definitely consider trying to keep it on one side or the other, or at least as you come down through, try to keep it on the sides. Try not to run through the middle of the water if you can. Um, keep that especially in mind when you have lines that are coming in and you have to put the entrance in or tap the tree like this one here this is on the the, the edge of a water um hole i guess we'll call it a water hole it's about a foot deep and you know the taps are up there above my head it's a real pain i don't like servicing that one wish it wasn't there but anyways i gotta put this camera down so that can use both hands and try to hold myself above the water, maybe even levitate a little bit. So, good luck. Well, it's definitely the year of the bear. Bear bite. Bear bite. Another one right there. Three bear bites. Never ends. I think this is bear bite probably 18 or 20 now. Main lines, 5 16 There's a lot of little bears around. Well, back up at the, I'm going to call it the North Pole Woods for the starting of the season here. Because everything is covered in snow and ice. And it's a real pain in the butt. This line is like 15 or 1700 feet long. One inch. It's like 400 taps on it. It says it's got 20 inches of vacuum, so we do have a leak on it. But yeah, back in the North Pole here. Now I'm headed up one of my busier lines here up in the North Pole. Um, got a little brook underneath it, of course. That's apparently my deal. I like to put it over top of the water, over the brook, and slippery rocks. So, um, But you can see this is double-sided, and it's quite busy. Um, so when I rebuilt it this summer, this right side, the right, this right side, and my finger points to the right side, those used to go up and over this knob over here. I added a main line uh, right kind of the top of the knob, maybe over the top, down over the top, just a little bit um, to get the slope and everything. It was kind of silly. I didn't build it the first time, but... The lines were long and there was probably seven taps on those runs each, so that, that's not too cool. So I chopped those down and shortened it up. Extra main line to walk there, but that's that's okay. That's good. That's what we want. Shorter shorter runs on the tubing. Um, so I'm going to take a walk up through here and see what I find. Okay, so I spent all day in the woods chasing some big leaks and uh, just checking on the vacuum pump here at the end of the day, getting near dark. What I'm looking for is the feedback. So I don't have it set very high. I have it set to run at 49 hertz. And uh, that's about 24 and a half inches, which the gauge here in the room's pretty much that. And we're feeding back a little over 50. 
So that means that it's tighter than what it's trying to run at. Uh, that's good for today. I know I still got some lines with ice in them and frozen and all that, so uh, it's a darn good start to whatever could run in the next day or two. Who knows what's going to happen here? Probably nothing, but just wanted to show you, you know, what the what the end goal looks like here. So now the pump's running at. Um, so this is my set point. 49 is my set point, but the pump's actually running at 38. 36 hertz is the as low as I run this machine without it cavitating because it's a water pump. So full speed is 60 hertz. It's running at 38. I'm happy. Sounds good. We're gonna call it a day, I think. <laughs>